So one thing I think I'm going to try occasionally on this channel is to look at a few pieces that have really inspired me and to try to articulate and demonstrate, admittedly from a composer's point of view, but hopefully in a way that anyone can understand what, what it is that I think is so great about them. So the first piece that I'd like to look at is a piece by a Czech composer called Leos Janáček. Leos Janáček. Leos Janáček. And it's called Symphonietta. Now these, these used to be in alphabetical order. Let me just see. Mahler. No. Janáček. Here we go. Janáček. Symphonietta. Symphonietta is really a unique piece and it looks unique from the moment the players come out on stage. Now it's scored for full orchestra which of course has four horns, three trumpets, three trombone and a tuba. But then there's also effectively a separate brass band of nine further trumpets, two bass trumpets and two tenor tubas. But what I love most about the piece and what's most unique about it is its uniquely satisfying, rewarding and fulfilling shape. <gasps> now to explain what's so good about what happens here, we need to take a step back and think about expectations in a piece of music. People often talk about tension and release in music. The music builds up, it gets more and more tense, more and more intense. And then there's some form of release. The release can sometimes be almost a sexual moment, most famously in the end of Wagner's Tristan and Isolde. You get one bursting, climactic moment and then the tension instantly dissolves away. Or the release can be sort of like this plateau, like a point of arrival. Another favourite piece of mine, Stravinsky's Petrushka, has one of these moments towards the end of the piece. It's this fantastic stomping dance for full orchestra, which just gives you this feeling of having arrived at the best place in the world. Judging how to handle the ebb and flow of tension is, to me, one of the most important aspects of being a composer. Janacek's music is certainly full of tension and release. And before we go further, let's just have a little look at a couple of the ways he does build tension, because he's really a master at it. Number one, things getting more and more extreme. As the tension rises, registers and orchestrations become more and more extreme and unusual. Here, for example, a high violin melody is accompanied by a growling rhythmic texture in the lower strings. Sometimes he'll use the more unusual instruments like the higher E-flat clarinet. Two, textures start to alternate more quickly. Janacek loves this sort of chopping technique which increases the more tense things get. In the end it's a bit like being bombarded by different people talking to you from all sides. Your attention gets dragged from one thing to another until you're not quite sure where you are. Three, chord progressions. Janacek uses pretty basic tension building chord progressions. For example, chromatically rising a half step and then jumping down a third to start again, a bit like changing gear in a car. One of the ways I've learned from Janacek how to handle tension works particularly well for multi-movement works. You might call it the build up and cut off. So the tension builds, but then before it reaches its climax, you snap the lid shut and put it back in its box. It's letting us know there's more to come, but we'll have to be patient. Some of the best examples of Janacek's build up and cut off technique can be seen in another great piece of his, the Glagolitic Mass. It's an amazing piece of music in eight movements, and many of them have this huge build up, which doesn't fully resolve at the end of the movement. Take the end of the Slava, the Gloria. The music's been building in tension in various ways that we described earlier, alternating quickly between textures, rising chord progressions, it's all there. Towards the end, it does reach this sort of plateau with, it seems like we might have reached the summit. But no, the music signals there's still more to go, onwards tension driving higher and higher. And although there is some sense of closure in the final pretty weird amens, I've never heard such ecstatic, almost violent sounding amens, 
you really get a sense that all that built up energy hasn't reached its culmination, it's still bursting and bubbling away under the surface waiting to be let out in a future movement. So let's come back to the Sinfonietta now. Well, Janacek starts that piece by laying down a seemingly impossible expectation. The piece opens with an almighty point of arrival, the full fanfare featuring all of those brass players. If I'd have tried something like this as a student, my old teacher Harrison Burtwistle would have said, you've shown your cards a bit too early there, David. What he would mean is it's such a huge, exciting, powerful opening, it leaves you with the question, where could you possibly go from here? Well, in order for the piece not to be a disappointment, I think you'd have to bring the fanfare back in some form. There are some cases of pieces that start with a powerful opening that never returns. Probably the best known is Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto, those iconic crashing chords and the theme they accompany, neither of which are ever heard again after the opening of the piece. Musicologists have found various connections between the theme and the other motives in the work, but to me it's always sounded a little unbalanced, a little top-heavy if you like, because that opening sets up a sort of expectation that isn't fulfilled. And you might well expect the same thing to happen in the Sinfonietta. How could Janacek possibly outdo something that's already 100%? Well, this is what's so miraculous about the piece. He doesn't just bring it back with added flourishes from the rest of the orchestra that makes it sound even more intense, but he actually finds a way to integrate it into a build-up that has such an intensity that when the fanfare finally returns, it fulfills such an extreme level of anticipation and expectation. It just seems like a superhuman feat. From the opening of the final movement, you'd never guess where it's going to end up. But what happens from here on is that things just build and build and build and you really get this to the stage where you think somebody's going to burst a blood vessel in a moment. Janacek pulls out all of those tension building tricks we saw earlier, the most extreme registers, the most extreme instruments, an almost ludicrous series of modulating chords which rack the tension so high it almost seems like a joke. Janacek often flirts with things that, in other hands, could seem corny or kitsch. The whole final movement could give the impression of somebody just getting a bit overexcited. But then it finally happens, you make it back to this peak. And it, it really feels like you've arrived at the peak of this huge mountain that you've spent the whole piece climbing. And now finally you're exhausted and happy that you've finally reached the summit. It's a blissful feeling and one that the clips I can show here on YouTube don't fully convey. I just hope one day you get a chance to experience it live in a concert yourself. So what do you think of the Sinfonietta and do you have any other classical pieces you think I should cover here on the channel? Do let me know in the comments. Thanks as ever to my patrons for supporting the channel and as usual please do like, subscribe and share with your friends. See you next time.